fairness. Uh, Mr. Sh Begman, you have the floor. I'm going to cut you back. I have a couple minutes. You get three minutes, and then we'll resume with five, so both sides of the table can get equitable time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Minister Sajjan, uh, Deputy Minister Forster, General Vance, thank you for being here, and thank you, most importantly, for your service to the nation. Um, Minister Sajjan, I wonder if you could take the now limited time that I have to tell the committee and the Canadian people um, how the nature of conflict has changed, how it has transitioned from interstate conflict to conflict that's now on a preponderance of evidence taking place within the borders of nation states and what implications that has both for the humanitarian, the military work that we're doing and also for civilian populations that are caught uh, in the crossfire of these conflicts. Uh, no, that, this is one question I think um, on many, uh, many nations are struggling with. Um, but even though we're facing with these uh, uh, evolving challenges, um, the conflict ha has, has changed where, where in the past we used to have two states come to an agreement and we can put peacekeeping troops uh, uh, in between them and, and, uh, and maintain their, uh, their, their agreements. In but with the evolving changing of conflict, we need to be cognizant that a military solution can't, can't uh, uh, cannot uh, be the, the one-stop solution. We need to make sure that the, uh, how, how diplomacy and development is going to be synchronized. This is one experience I think Canada is very well poised to be able to offer um, um, to our allies. We, we, have, done, we have done this, uh, done this well. And, but what we're talking about here is after the fact. What we also need to now get better at uh, is to start identifying where some of the, uh, uh, the, the, the conflicts that we have seen, where could we have possibly looked at uh, dealing with early on. Um, so we need to get looking at um, how do we identify uh, some of the, uh, the, 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 the early indicators of, say, for example, of a political vacuum. Um, that, that might have been uh, be cr being created in an area. What can we do early on to, to prevent uh, the problem from getting uh, getting even bigger? Um, where uh, and what it comes to back down to is our, our understanding of, of conflict and our understanding of certain regions uh, of, of the world and understanding their social dynamic, how it's connected in with with the political realm. Uh, the the situation in Iraq is is, is you know is uh, is an example of this, where. Uh, uh, where the uh, the ethnic um, uh, the uh, sectarian violence created a political vacuum to allow a radical organization to take a foothold in a country, and this is where we're at. So we need to be able to learn from those lessons and say, how can we get, uh, what what can we do in the early stages to be able to prevent it from getting into a full scale uh, coalition effort to to to, to stop the threat. Mr. Chair, maybe very briefly, um, what implications would that have for our work with our allies, both organizational allies like the United Nations and our coalition partners? Coalitions are broadening, new cultures are coming into the resolution of conflicts. It's a very complex picture and it requires, in my view, a lot of coordination. Mm -hmm. Could you make a very brief comment on that? Yes. Yeah. Or less, I would appreciate it. We need to set the example of it. Uh, we have some great lessons uh, here in Canada where we, uh, and I think we've already started this, where um, our uh, Op Impact mission was done in collaboration with myself, Minister uh, Dion, uh, and, and Mr. Bebo. Um, so set the example of interdepartmental work. So not only at the leadership level, our departments also work in collaboration as well. Uh, and other, my counterparts um, uh, around the world, and especially in the European nations, and, and particularly in the U.S., realize the value of this. So not only, th so they need to also start working together. Then the next mechanism for us as a coalition to be able to bring these resources together. And then how do we use multilateral organizations like United Nations, like NATO, and to be able to bring uh, uh, proper solutions uh, to this? And I was very, just very quickly, is. Uh, on my first uh, meetings uh, at NATO with my counterparts, these are the discussions that we were having. How do we look at capacity building early on in areas and bol uh, bolstering the security forces so they can provide better, uh, uh, better policing? How do you bol uh, bolster the, uh, the governance structure in countries to prevent uh, radical groups from taking a foothold in, in a country? <clears throat> Thank, you. Thank you, Minister.